How's it going everyone? Wayne the Unknown here and welcome to another episode of Cosplay Con Talk where we basically discuss everything pertaining to the cosplay community and conventions. Tonight we are doing another episode of Get to Know That Cosplayer and tonight's featured guest is Artie. How are we doing tonight, Artie? Doing good, doing good. How about you, man? I'm doing pretty well again. Thank you for coming on to want to talk mm -hmm. about your cosplay and convention experience. Oh yeah. So, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with how this series goes. Um, I'll be asking questions about, you know, what got you into cosplay, what kind of cons you gone to, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And to begin, uh, how long have you been cosplaying for? Uh, I actually, um, my only form of cosplay was really only through Halloween. And, like, I actually didn't really start getting into it until, like, as of last year when I went as Frank Morrison from the Legion from Dead by Daylight for Halloween and I thought why not make it a full on cosplay so that's how that's how that was the really big kickstart for that nice. so I'm pretty fresh in it <laughs> um, what made you decide to cosplay uh, one of the killers from Dead by Daylight Um, it all started by how um, a group of friends got me into it and it kind of led me to that, and I like it was like looking at Legion, is what is that like as as they are because Legion is just four teenagers as one whole killer, but yeah, like they all have their own separate cosmetics. But um, uh, what got me full into deciding as that is because I don't know, man. It's like Frank is like the only developed one out of the rest of Legion from Julie, Susie, and Joey, and plus like the amount of different portrayals of him that you see like over Tumblr or via cosplay, or just wherever, it's like, it, like, it catches your eye, and then, like, you look at it, and it's just like, oh, okay. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so, the first thing I ever bought was uh, the mask for Frank. So I have that. <laughs> and then the rest of the stuff you just, like, got off, like, from thrift stores and everything? <laughs> yeah. Hey, That's... say, that you know, sometimes, and that actually brings me to my next question now, I usually ask this later uh, in the in interviews, um, what are your thoughts on thrifting for your cosplays if you're on a budget? Honestly, it's a good way to start because it also does adhere with me with uh, with uh, what is called uh, closet cosplay. Because like if you don't have all the materials, it's to utilize what you got around you to make it work. And utilizing thrift stores is that you could buy clothes that you know you don't care if you get them bloodied up or dirtied up. Or just mess them up in general. So, like, utilizing that, it's a good way to go about it as well. Because you could literally just hit up, like, a Goodwill and just, like, virtually anywhere. Or, like, go to any local store and find something small that you could utilize and just go from there. Oh, most definitely. And also, thrifting is a good way to basically go as a casual version of a character. Yeah. <laughs> I did that once as for, uh, for Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. Oh, no. For uh, a cosplay group meetup that we did at the Clackamas Town Center up here, so. Oh, nice! Did you have the uh, earrings and everything? I had the earrings. I had I had a smaller version of the hay of the Hayori, and I had the white belt. I had the actual full cosplay, but I just like I'm like, why not go as a, a just a casual like version a, of like him? a modern day Tanjiro. Yeah, because like I'm, I'm like I don't think I want to go waltz around a mall with everything on because you'd be sweating, off. you'd be sweating and everything. Yeah, yeah. despite the clothes being baggy, which is nice, it's like I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna kill myself. <laughs> nice. Um, now, do you remember what your very first con was, and who did you go as for your first con? Um, uh, my very first con was the Rose City Comic Con. Uh, that was for my 18th birthday, so that was exactly in 2018. Um, I went with a friend of mine that I knew since middle school and my dad because he wanted to record that. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And uh, I, oh gosh, I didn't have the entire rest of what I just thrown together for a, for at the time, what was the female Dalson from the Second Son. Uh, but like I had the beanie, I had the, uh, I had the plaid shirt on. But, like, I didn't have the rest of what was needed for it, but, like, I just went as, as, as very casual. Oh, Delson Rowe? Yes, Delson nice. Rowe! Nice! Little Del, Mokey Hands, Banner Man! <laughs> voiced by, uh, for those who don't know, he's voiced by Troy Baker. Yes! 
Troy Baker also voiced the great Reese, which if you play Tales in the Borderlands, you know him from that, but he sadly did not voice Reese in the third Borderlands game, which still makes me very upset. Yeah. Uh, he's also in Death Stranding, who plays the main villain. And I'm trying to think of where else have I heard his voice, but I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, no, he, play wait. He, he played as Joel from The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he also played as, uh, he voiced as Jones from Fortnite with the whole riff shit going on. Nice. Um, what was it like? What was it like playing? Um, what was it like cosplaying as uh, Delson Rowe? Um. Uh, so, so when I did it for Halloween at first, before uh, like after the con had already passed, that's when I got, that's when I did, like the whole rest of it. It was really cool because I I just utilized one of those um those chain dog leashes and literally wrapped that around my arm, along with taking this long piece of um of a glow stick and just like weaved it through i'm like i'm like i don't have anything to represent video or smoke or concrete so i'm like well neon works <laughs> hey it, i mean it works yeah. plus one of his one of his one of the powers he does get later on is neon from fetch yeah it's it's basically newbs newbies <laughs> nice and <laughs> uh, and honestly someone like someone like delson rowe is e like you said easy to get like at a thrift store and all he also needs like paint to paint the back of his uh yeah, his vest. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A friend of mine did did, did that for me, so well, that that's why I have that. That was nice yeah. of him. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Um, what was it like going to Rose City Comic Con for your first con? For 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 my first con, and also it being my birthday at the time as well, it was really exciting. There was a lot of things I saw. There was like there was a lot of things I actually noticed too, like like a lot of references I've seen, uh, panels and booths, and I was like, crap, man. This is really what cons are like, but what sucks is that I have not been to a con since, so it kind of sucks. But like, but like, like that, but like that for a first time experience, it was honestly like one of the best things in my entire life. <laughs> nice. And I was, I imagine, was it? It was a bit of a culture shock for you too, especially with Rose City being so big in Oregon. Not really. No, it wasn't, it wasn't a culture shock. I was like, I've watched, uh, like, for the longest time, for years, I've actually watched con videos because I've loved them for years. And I've always thought about, wow, I just wanted to cosplay so bad. And, like, at the time, Halloween was my only outlet. And just, like, it was, God, videos after videos, whether it be fursuiters, high-end cosplayers, uh, or cosplayers who just utilize what they have. It's like, I've, I loved it so much. I feel like... Just, like years i feel like that's how most people especially someone like me that's how i found about cosplaying was a tv show on sci-fi like with years ago was called heroes of cosplay Ooh. i mean i've known i've known about cosplaying and cons since 2009 but i didn't get into myself till you know a few years ago but um yeah. I, I feel like again that's like how most people at a young age get introduced to cosplays like the media and everything they see this stuff online and it's like oh so i can dress up without being judged yeah it's like it's like it's like it's like, a, it's like um because like I said because when I first did that that little small group meetup with other cosplayers um I never thought how cool it would be just to walk around and some people and some people just look at you and be like holy dude like holy crap dude you look so amazing and it's like and it's like it's something about it. it's like such a, it's such like an empowering feeling or something like that but like it gives you more confidence that like you don't have to be afraid to dress up. But then, like, but then, like, it also makes you think about how sad it is for people that they make dressing up differently their absolute life and their aesthetic, and how much they get judged for. It. And I'm like, I'm like, this is kind of sad and stupid. And I'm like, so you look at someone who is like, well, it's like a poser who who is like a, a goth, and they dress the way they like, and they feel comfortable, and they get judged for it. And you look like a co and you look at a cosplayer, and they get praised. And it's like it's some it's somewhere backwards thing I don't know but like it's kind of messed up in my head. No, no, I I get what yeah I get I get exactly what you're what you're saying and all, mm. and I I feel like the cosplay community I'm not meaning this disrespect. Mm -hmm. It's whether it's inside or outside the cosplay community. There's gonna be those kind of people that will you know keep other people from wanting to cosplay or get into cosplay because they feel like this is their thing. Like, no one else should, you know, do it. I'm not saying all every cosplayer oh. in the community is like that, 
but I have seen quite a few that are like that, and that kind of just yeah, like it, oh, yeah. it, it makes people not want to get into cosplay or, or makes the people who enjoy it for what it is just stop. Oh yeah, yeah. People who ruin it for others, it's it's heartbreaking because it's like, dude, you, it's like you just killed the one thing that they found they could enjoy, and they feel like now it's like they're a burden because of what you said and what you've done. Co cosplayers, it, it depends. It's like some let the fame of recognition get to their heads so much that they basically just become rude. Some some people are like that, and some pe and the other people who are who don't let it get to them, they're nothing but just open and kind. And it's like wow, but like it just depends on which side that you come across first and how they react. But again, also the people who are rude, they could play off as being nice, which does suck sometimes. And it's like, bro, just like don't do that, man. Or like just just don't be rude at all. No, definitely. Yeah, it, it, it's like it goes with the concept of treat others the way you want to be treated, or or like if it's not nice, don't say it. It it goes with that, but yet some people like ignore all that, just throw it out the window, and just say things, and it's just like. No, it, it, most yeah, I, I, I I can't agree anymore on that. So uh, next, um, what I want to ask is, um, have you ever had any cosplay mishaps? It's a question I haven't really asked in a while. Asked in a while for for people mm -hmm. I've interviewed, but have you ever had any cosplay mishaps? Whether it's going to the con at the con, like something ripped, torn, and like you could you knew what happened, but you didn't want people to know. Uh not really. Because uh, a lot of the because a lot I, I look at a lot of the cosplays I have and like a lot of them are more just like laid back and like it's more just like standard looking clothing, but of course like with some modifications. But like uh, but like but like it's just it's just like normal pants, shoes, what look like, just whatever done. So like I never really had issues, but yet again I'm not entirely high end. But like my only worry I think right now with upcoming cosplay wise is what i have for felix from red versus blue because um have season you... 17 of like filler episodes but like he's in, he's on like a whole suit and i'm like ah oh, shit i'm afraid i'm, I'm gonna but then you that. but then you found out he actually wears like an actual like suit suit oh the power armor is a whole different thing the, the, no the, the... I, i'm talking about uh when he's wearing the uh like the black suit with the um mm -hmm. Yeah, with the, or because, with the with the orange uh, button up shirt. Not no no no. It was it was a gray button up with the black blazer over it, uh, black slacks, gloves, and he had an orange tie. Oh yeah, God! I have to say, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you to show how much I paid attention. I, again, I, I, know, I, I know, I know, I know what, I know what, I know what you're, I know which one you're talking about though. I remember that episode yeah, very no, well. Yeah, yeah, like I said, season seventeen. It ha yeah, it's nothing but just filler episodes. Was it season oh, 17? No, wait, it was, no, no, it was 15. No, no 14. Yeah. I think, yeah. It was, season, it, was season, it was season 14. I remember it was the, um, not to get off topic here, but it is like, it was like the, the abridged episodes. Yeah, like, like I said, filler episodes. I know exactly, I know exactly, I know exactly know how you're, I know exactly know what you're talking about. It's when we find out who Felix and Locus were before they became, um, Mercenaries. Sam Ortiz and Isaac Gates with Mark with Marcus Wu or Cyrus. Yeah, he's also he's the one who got him into the whole bounty hunting thing, and then of course Isaac, being the absolute way that he is, he later turned it around after Wu left and just went mercenaries instead. Mm -hmm. So and you, that's when the so whole you, core so you, trilogy came in with 11, 12, 13th season. Yeah. So you so what was it like cosplaying as uh, Felix from the filler episodes when you found I out? Have not I have not done it yet, honestly. Oh. It's still actually in the works, but like I said, because uh, when you mentioned cosplay mishaps, that's why I said that I'm afraid something might happen. Because um, the shirt I have, uh, my mother has helped me out a little bit, so like she has to have it yet to be uh, tailored out, so like it's more slim fit to my figure. Because I'm skinny, I do. <laughs> Don't like I'm like the absolute definition of like what is a twig. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not even funny. Hey, but like, no, yeah, no, I'm afraid of, I'm, like something might rip. No, 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 no judging or body shaming here. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, I'm just saying. So it's like, yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot of people. Um, when do you plan on when you get when you get him done? Uh, when do you plan on debuting uh, F uh, Felix? Um, so 
So uh, a friend of mine had invited me to a con this September in Salt Lake called Fanex, and that's happening on the 16th, 17th, 18th day. We're going to plan to stay there for a week, but my worry is of what is the Delta variant, and so like I'm trying to keep watch that to make sure to see how bad it gets, and like it, and, like if something happens. And if the date gets closer and like they show no signs of stopping the con, I'm I'm honestly gonna have to drop because I'm a little afraid of that. And in the end, I'll just use him uh, for uh, for Komori con that my friend wants to take me to. That another that I'm sorry that another friend wants to take me to. Nice. And is this your first time going? Would this be your first time going to Komori con? Yes. Nice. <laughs> because I'm not though. I haven't been anywhere else outside the state. The only time I've been outside the state in general was in 2008 with my dad to his home country, Honduras, for Christmas. That was fun. Nice. Now, um, do you have any any cosplay stories you'd like to share, whether it be an embarrassing, funny moment, stuff like that, whether, again, you were going to the con, at the con, or before you got to the con? Um, I think one thing that was really funny, um, it wasn't at a con, actually. It was just, it was, it, like, I keep reverting back to the whole, the whole cosplay group meetup because that's where it happened. Because the, while we were, we were sitting there getting boba tea and, uh, and some people happened to pass by and one shouted. And we, and like, we all looked over and we're like, what was that about? And, uh, my friend, my friend who wants to, who wants to take me to Komori, uh, he looks at me, and he's like, I think he was yelling for you. And I was like, what? <laughs> so in confusion. So I was like, wait a minute. So I set them up my boba and I ran out to like the main to the main walkway. And uh, I skid like I literally skid to a whole stop. <laughs> so like well, they, like she was literally skidding on the ground. It was funny. And so uh the guy who had shouted, one of his friends got his attention and he looked at me and that's he full on scream, turn it on! And I was like, ah, so that he got into the stance uh, that Chandra would get into when he goes to draw a sword, and that I did the exact same. <laughs> and we had a whole laugh about it, and I was like, that's great. And I'm like, now I see why people just openly cosplay it. I'm like, nice. like, like that made me go absolutely, like, in a sense, feral. like, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, now, has have you cosplayed a character that you haven't cosplayed in a long time that you would consider bringing back to a con? Hunter from Left 4 Dead. Who? A hunter from Left 4 Dead. You know, like with the whole zombies, like you have the uh, four survivors and they run through a, an entire city. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, familiar, I'm, I'm familiar with Left 4 Dead. Hunters yeah. are the ones that wear... The hoodies and that, yeah, they are um, the ones that were park that, that did parkour and they died. And the, <sighs> and the virus that made them zombies took part of that and so they got their enhanced muscling. I, and so I, like I, a I, I hate, I hate those things so much. I actually have a, uh, on my channel, I actually have a few episodes from playing Left 4 Dead 2, and <laughs> you can see quite a bit where me and my team get jumped by a few hunters. I'll have to watch for that. I'll have to scroll through and find it now. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like the one I plan to take the call with me is the version from, from Left 4 Dead 2. So I literally grabbed a sweater and a pair of pants I don't care about. And like I started to literally uh, cut them up as I've seen from the images to get it right, and then afterwards it's like I'm I'm going to literally drag them through dirt and just dirty them up to high health. Hey, sometimes and, uh, the cosplayer will do what they have to to make their cosplay look screen accurate. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And like I've seen a video of it too, where or a group of friends were going to see us. Uh, different survivors from both from both Left 4 Dead games, and they went to a con, and they literally rolled in dirt. I'm like. That's amazing. I mean, I, just... I remember seeing this cosplayer on here as a cosplay once. He went to cosplay as Edward Kenway, he, and he made the costume in himself and everything. But to get that 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 scent and that you know uh, deterioration, he literally went to the ocean and just just plopped in the ocean to get that smell of the seawater. You okay? You can't really beat the smell of salt. It's like when you go to the beach and it hits you. It's like. It's honestly relieving. I love that smell. It's like one of the few smells I sit there and I'm like, I love the smell. Nice. I'm like, no, it's like, it's like Connor Kenway, man. That's great. It's funny because I have a poster of Assassin's Creed Black Flag on my wall. <laughs> 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 oh, 
I think I think honestly, Black Flag was one of my most favorite games from the Assassin's Creed series, and I memorized one of the shanties by absolute heart nice. because me and Green Bay threw a whole big face for it, and nice. I, I, I love the shanties a lot. Now, um, now another question, kind of like that: Is there one cosplay that you haven't uh, that you you've done once and you would never want to do it again? Is like it was just kind of like a one and done kind of cosplay. Honestly, the idea of being an avatar from the from James Cameron Avatar movie, that was that was that was a bit of a hassle to try to get all the face paint and the dots right for that one Halloween I did it. And I was like, I don't think I want to do that thing again. Um, so uh, uh, some advice. Wait, did you paint your whole body? Uh, no, I had a I had a, a on a long blue sleeve shirt and blue pants, and then I just threw a pair of ten tennis shoes. So, like I didn't have anything else, and then my mother. Uh, painted my face, and at the time when I had back on um, back when I had long hair, she braided that, and uh, and she stuck little ribbons to the very end to mimic that whole um, the weird nervous system at the very nice. end of the lobby. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, some advice. Um, if you ever get the chance to look into, look into like zentai suits and skin suits. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I've seen those be. I see those be used a lot, honestly, and I'm. And I'm like, that's like a great way to go about doing it. Yeah, no. So, uh, from what I've seen, Zentai suits seem to be like a person's best friend, especially if they don't want to be covered in body paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also like it also depends on the type of paint you use as well. And that's gonna really hurt. Like acrylic paints, eh, that that hurts uh, a little. Maron, uh, uh, Maron, and Snazaru, they're kind of your your best bet. Snazaru is a little bit cheaper, for uh, and I used it one. I, had, I used it once. And uh, there's also Maron. And they're 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 fairly priced. They're they're definitely good when it comes to body paint. Hmm. So something um, I'd recommend looking into. Oh yeah, for sure. Now I'm like, huh, that's something definitely to look into for sure. Yeah. And also, feel free to anyone who's listening for good makeup advice. Feel free to look at the other videos, and also feel free to look into a panel called that I did recently with a few with a few good people called cosplay wig and makeup styling. It's definitely it's definitely a really helpful video. Oh yeah, now I have to I have to watch that one because um, makeups. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, damn, people are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how did I do that? <laughs> now, from your experience, is there like any advice you would like to share for first time cosplayers or cosplayers who are or people who are considering to get into the cosplay who were you know kind of like eh, should I should I not kind of thing? Yeah, my my biggest thing that like i've said to a few people who said like like they've been tempted to i say you know what just literally just jump into that jump like like just dress up in your own home like walk around for a little bit if you must and just like see how comfortable it feels see if it's the right thing for you and if you want to keep it to yourself that's fine i primarily utilize um cosplaying for like like when i do tiktok so like i literally keep it to that but um, yeah, I've only cosplayed once or twice outside, but like uh, it was for those little coffee meetups that I did, and like uh, that was fun to do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The main thing is just like yeah, it's literally just to get into it, and like um, like definitely get advice or, or like ask how your fam ask your family like how you look, if you are with family, if if you are with family, and like just like like get a whole feel for it. And again, if it's comfortable. I said, take a day out if you must, and just like just see how it is. And if some people react really positive, or and it's, and it's just like, and, and you decide it's like, you know what, that's it. It's because sometimes it's like it's it could be the small amounts of positivity that like some people will be able, that can push someone, if not if if anything. So, and sometimes it's like it, like if you have a big drive to cosplay. Yeah, again, if you just you just go forth and conquer with it. You literally just ram on head first with it. Nice. And would you also agree that for a first time cosplayer they should do something simple and not try to go overboard, especially if they're on a budget? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's like uh uh it's like uh so like if you look at a lot of the survivors for Dead by Daylight, like they're literally wearing clothing you'll find anywhere. I'm like you could literally just like just about do a whole mock up, or like or like um, a girl I saw she was cosplaying as one of the characters from Attack on Titan, and she said that she's literally pulled things from her actual closet, and the colors were honestly were on point, 
And I was really impressed. I was like, that is really close. And that is actually really good for a whole closet cosplay. Nice, nice. Now, also, kind of uh, in that same category of que of question, um, advice for first time con goers. You know, oh. what would you yeah. what would you recommend for first time con goers who are who don't want to cosplay but are like curious on what a con is like? Uh, yeah, it's 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 yeah. For that, I was actually asked this question from a from a kid that I had met, and they were asking me like, "Hey, so what should I expect at a con?" Well, one of the things that you should expect is that it's is that because cons are really big and they happen uh, like throughout almost the entire world, it's like is to be aware that it's going to be a lot of people. And if you're sound sensitive for those who are autistic or ADHD, and like you, if you like, if sound sensitivity is your thing, then bring earplugs, earmuffs. But like, but like also like. It, it's just like be aware of, of yourself as well. Go with someone that you know you can trust highly, or or, or or like someone who has done this stuff before, and like you ask them questions as well. So like you look things up if it's if, like, you know it's gonna be a lot of people, then you bring the proper things to sustain yourself or or your, or like um, literally anything. And like and then like at a con itself, you ask questions. You ask other cosplayers out of there, you ask what their first time experiences are like, so you get a whole grasp of an idea of what people could be throwing themselves into if so they choose to cosplay for the next con that comes up. Nice. And that's some really sound advice. And also, not uh, for you, but also for those who are listening, if you want more advice on that kind of topic as well, I do have a pod. I do have two podcast panels. One talking about convention safety and awareness, and also one about autism and cosplaying. Mm -hmm. That's a th 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 those are good ones. <laughs> um. Now we got about four minutes. Uh, real quick. Um. What are some? Uh. What are your top three dream cosplays? Oh, oh crikey! <laughs> this is an interesting one to think about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Cause like I. Oh gosh. Um, gosh, I do want to perfect my friend closet. I still get to work on that one entirely. My Quentin Smith one from My Man Elm Street 2010 version, plus also my Dead by Daylight. That one's actually almost complete. Felix went, oh god, but if I had to think about a dream one, um, I want to retry Delson. I want to retry cosplaying him really bad, but also I thought about, um, like, 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 I've seen artworks of it, but a male version of Sombra from Overwatch. That would be a cool one to try again as well, because I'm like, it, like, I've once had my head half-shaven as well. I've gone through that hairstyle. I and I'm like, like, you know what? I think I could really pull the one off if I really try hard enough. And, like, if I just alter clothing to be more suited to how I am. And, like, I, I think I could really go for a male version of Sombra. So that'd be, for, Sombra that, is, like, chaotic. that'd be pretty cool to see uh, Sombra done that'd be pretty mm -hmm. cool yeah nice. because i've seen nothing but like yeah you know, like you know you see women you see them cosplay that's fine mm -hmm. but you've never seen a guy cosplay like a whole male version of a character nice. and because of the fact that like in the overwatch in the overwatch lore that sombra is a hacker and then basically it's like he that she could go as literally anything and dress herself in so many ways and literally go unnoticed by anyone it's like you could have the most you could have you could Go mess around and have the most interesting or fun messing around as Sombra, if not. <laughs> it's like, because I think, like, if people cosplay a character uh, that is that is chaotic in some way, or, like, like, who's really goofy and dumb, in a way, I see it as, like, a way for that person to let any jitters out. I don't know if that, to me, that also makes sense. I was like, that's a good idea about it. But no, for me, it's just, like, I think I could pull off a male Sombra, if anything. So that's my thought process with that. Nice. I'm looking looking forward to potentially seeing that. Now, um, real quick, we got like two minutes here. Well, actually a minute, but I figure we can squeeze this in. Any last minute advice you want to throw in here real quick? Um, If you want to wait around for spirit Halloween to come around, and if you want fake blood, uh, my friend told me this. He said, utilize water, uh, clothing, red dye, and um, cornstarch. How much cornstarch you use depends on how thick and goopy you want that fake blood to be. <laughs> so that that that's for all those people who want to do ones that are like 
like bloody cosplays. I'm only saying that because again, because I I had to do that to my Hunter cosplay. I'm going to take it. Um, I'm going to use that. <laughs> but yeah. So I I feel like that's important because I don't think a lot of people realize that could be a thing. Instead of just going online and buying gallons of fake blood, you could just go to your store, buy buy tie dye stuff, buy a tie dye cake that has red, and get cornstarch, and go home and see how. That's how some you want it. pretty interesting advice. Uh, yeah, so I, I definitely have to give front, give props to my friend for that. I thought oh, that was props to your friend. To nice. Well, that should do it. Again, Artie, thank you for coming on. And also, for those who want to check him out, a uh, link to his Instagram will be in the description below if that is okay to add in there. Yeah, yeah. And also, a little to my TikTok, because that's when I'm also, that's where I do all my stuff at. That's when I kind of mess around with a lot. <laughs> yeah. Links to his TikTok and Instagram will be in the description below. Again, I am joined here by Artie for Cosplay Con Talks. Get to know that cosplayer. And until next time, I am Wayne the Unknown. Thank you for listening, and also thank you for watching.